Welcome to This Week in Security with our roundup of the most important stories of the week affecting the UK security of private and public sector organisations. Our editor's top stories this week, a drone causes chaos at a major UK airport. Online fraud is costing billions, so why isn't it a police priority? We also take a look at how smartphone security can be compromised via basic screen repairs. There's also an international Bitcoin exchange that suffered a major data breach. We're also going to take a look at identity fraud and it's hitting record levels, but why are people still not protecting themselves? We reveal the worst places in the UK for vehicle crime and a secondary attack thwarted of the devastating NotPetya ransomware. And the NHS gives Google details on over a million patients breaking UK privacy law. Now, in 2016, the UK police had reports of 16 near misses at UK airports. British pilots are now warning about potential disasters if drones aren't subjected to tougher regulations. This comes after a drone caused chaos at London's Gatwick Airport earlier this week. A runway had to be shut down twice and at least five flights were diverted in an incident that has prompted a Sussex police investigation. The British Airline Pilots Association is calling for compulsory registration of drone users to allow police to track down anyone flying them irresponsibly. The union's flight safety specialist, Steve Landles, added that as the number of drones being sold takes off, new technology should be looked at to address safety concerns. Now, online fraud has become a common crime in England and Wales and requires an urgent response, according to the National Audit Office. In the year leading up to September 2016, there were 1.9 million estimated incidences of cyber fraud, which made up 16% of all crimes. The public spending watchdog has said that the issue is not yet a priority for all local police forces and the problem has been overlooked by government, industry and law enforcement. According to their report, the overall cost of all forms of fraud last year was £10 billion to individuals and £144 billion to the private sector. The Home Office, while not solely responsible for tackling the issue, is considered the only organisation that could oversee the system and lead to change. The Home Office's Joint Fraud Task Force, which launched back in February 2016, was a positive step. However, the NAO believes there is still a lot more to be done. Now, we all know that smartphone screens have a really bad habit of cracking. But the next time that you take yours to a repair shop, you'll want to be sure it isn't being fitted with a microcontroller that could infect it with dangerous malware. A group of researchers have warned this week that smartphone companies are not doing enough to secure data from their own phone components. They found that a simple repair could potentially turn into a serious data breach because a phone doesn't perform any security checks on its display hardware. And once compromised, the researchers were able to get a targeted device to do things like insert malicious URLs into browsers, take and email photos from the phone's camera, and even transmit the handset's unlock password. According to researchers, solving this problem will require phone manufacturers to put additional protections on the hardware itself. By adding security measures that monitor the traffic between the screen components, a simple firewall protection could be put into place to guard against this type of tampering. Now, do you trade in bitcoins in Asia? Ever heard or used BitThumb? Bitfum is South Korea's largest cryptocurrency exchange and one customer is reported to have lost over $1 million due to an unconventional hack. According to Yonhap, a news agency from South Korea, apparently 30,000 Bitfum customer details were obtained by stealing one of their employer's computers. 
Since then, criminals have used this data to make scam calls to trick customers into allowing them to steal their funds. The breach happened in February and has only just been discovered. Bitthumb is now under investigation by South Korean authorities. Now, identity fraud has been growing steadily over the past 10 years, and it's estimated that it's cost the UK economy £5.4 billion. This is according to the 2016 Annual Fraud Indicators published by CFAS. They recorded figures that show identity fraud now represents over half of all fraud, with 90% of it being perpetrated online. A recent survey commissioned by Equifax has helped to reveal some of the public's attitude toward protecting their identity. The results were quite shocking, showing that 27% of people use the same password for multiple accounts. 40% of people don't even have antivirus software installed on their devices. And 55% of people access public Wi-Fi that isn't password protected. This shows that many UK citizens are still leaving themselves wide open to identity fraud attacks. In response to this, organisations including Action Fraud, the City of London Police, CFAS and Equifax have been working together to inform and advise the British public on this rapidly increasing threat. Now, the devastating recent NotPetya ransomware attacks that were reported last week are not over. Ukrainian police have detected new suspicious activity on the servers of the accounting software company that was suspected of being at the heart of the attack. Authorities in the Ukraine have seized equipment from Medoc, the online accounting firm implicated in spreading the malware. The country's cyber police seized the servers, saying that they were acting immediately to stop the uncontrolled proliferation of malware which has devastated Ukrainian government and business, with many analysts claiming this was not ransomware but cyber warfare made to appear as ransomware. The Ukrainian infrastructure ministry alone has incurred millions in costs from the attack which hit two servers and hundreds of their workstations. The company's management and staff have fully assisted in the investigation, and the equipment is being sent for detailed analysis. The Cybercrime Department of Ukraine recommends people stop using the software until further notice, turn off any computers it's installed on, change their passwords, and get new digital signatures. Also, do check out our free training video which we published last week with updated countermeasures for this new variant of cyber attack. Now, new research has revealed that of 350,000 vehicle crimes reported last year, the Metropolitan Police recorded almost 90,000 of them in London. That's three times more than any other force in England. Figures released from the Office of National Statistics found that 71% of all vehicle thefts occurred during the week, and most often at night. Additionally, 43% of all vehicle-related crime occurs due to drivers not adequately locking their doors. Vehicle crime is considered one of the most preventable crimes, yet many forget to take the right precautions to avoid becoming a victim. All drivers should aim to make simple steps such as locking doors, removing all valuable possessions uh, when not in their vehicles, a habit. Making such behaviours a daily routine will go a long way to protecting drivers' vehicles from opportunist criminals and thieves. The Information Commissioner's Office has ruled that a UK hospital didn't do enough to protect patient privacy. This was in a recent medical trial. According to the ICO, the Royal Free NHS Trust didn't comply with the Data Protection Act when it passed on personal information of around 1.6 million patients to Google's DeepMind division. The data was used to develop and refine an app that would alert, detect and diagnose when patients were at risk of developing acute kidney injury. 
Several shortcomings were found during the investigation into the way the data was handled, including that patients weren't properly informed that their data would be used as part of the test. The trust has not been fined as a result of the investigation. Instead, it signed an undertaking to change the way it handles data. Google has said it welcomed the findings of the ICO's report and has added that it would reassess such trials in conjunction with the NHS. Now that's all for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our new website with regular video news alerts and training and marketplace. You can connect there with decision makers in the security industry and it's free to join. So if you're not already watching this news, uh, then go to www.securityexpert.online and click to register for free, as well as following us on Twitter and LinkedIn. You can also send us news stories uh, at newsdesk at securityexpert.online. And if you have some special expertise, request to appear on one of our future shows. Thanks for watching, and together online, we'll make the world a safer place. Bye for now.